Good evening and welcome to the Henry Schein Dental Academy webinar series. My name is Corinne and I will be your moderator. We are excited to welcome Dr. Audlin as our speaker today. She will walk us through how she uses 3D printed models and same day smile design to wow patients and win business. Before we get started, we have a few reminders for you. At any point during the webinar, if you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A section of your control panel and we will answer them live at the end. Henry Schein is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand. Dr. Audlin, welcome and thanks for being with us. Ah, oh, thank you so much for the intro, I appreciate it. Um, hopefully we'll still get some good tips even if we're uh, not doing CE. So thank you for being here tonight. I sure am grateful and excited to share one of my big passions. All right, so tonight we are gonna talk about some 3D printing and same day smile design. So little background on me. So I graduated from Oregon Health Science University back in 2006. I knew that I wanted to have my own practice, but in order for me to have my own practice, I needed to do an associateship. Uh, it's the only way the banks would give me money. So I had the most amazing opportunity to work with a gentleman who loved technology. And it's so much easier to look in hindsight of how grateful I am for that opportunity today. He was a steric user. Um, and back in 2006, this was kind of a big deal. He also placed his own implants. He was fully digital for what digital meant at that time. And it was an exciting opportunity. And what I loved most about it is how the patients responded to it. As a young practitioner, especially back then, having them watch me use like the Seric machine and using that technology, it kind of gave me an instant authority, which was great uh, as a young doctor, because that's one of the tricky things is when you come in and everyone kind of looks at you and says, are you old enough to be a doctor? And they loved that same day and no goop. And I fell in love with it so much that when I did my own startup practice in 2009, I knew I wanted to continue my adventures in technology. So did a startup practice at a time kind of not like today. Uh, it was kind of a scary time and I took out these big loans and in my town, so I'm from Vancouver, Washington, which is right outside of Portland, Oregon pretty competitive market. We're in the Pacific Northwest and it is a gorgeous place to live, but I had 90 dentists to compete with in my five mile radius. And so a lot of dentists in our area um, and I needed to differentiate myself. And so I did that through technology. I invested the money, but I also wanted to make sure I got a good return on that. So I was able to pay my bills. So I went down this whole rabbit hole of what I could do with the technology for both myself, my team, and my patients. And I have absolutely fallen in love with it. In my journey, I really uh, geared towards the restorative side. Um, I love doing same day smiles and it's how I grew my practice, um, both with same day smiles, but just same day delivery in every way I could. So I love it so much that I've also joined faculty down at Clinical Pathway, um, which is also Implant Pathway in Tempe, Arizona. And one of my big passions is being able to give back. And this is a facility where we do a lot of live patient education while giving back. And the great part about it is there's also an AEGD residency incorporated in that. And all the patients are taken care of comprehensively. So if it's not taught in the course, then the patients are seen by the residents or by the full-time faculty that are down there. Um, so all of that said, I am just a huge nerd in love with technology, in love with dentistry, and so excited to share that. So I wanna share my why. And this is a video of actually one of my last same day smile classes that I taught down in Tempe. And what I want you to pay attention to is not only the patient's reactions, but also the doctor's reactions. And you'll see in the background, all the doctors hovering. Um, this is an eight operatory facility where each doctor has their own patient um, with a mentor and they do a case and a lot of um a lot of these doctors had never done a case like this before and so to hear the doctor's reaction and to hear the patient's reaction this is why i love my job and love what i do it is scared oh my god <laughs> 
sharing this video because especially in today's world where there's so much stress going on and broken teeth and unknowns like this takes us back to what we can do in our profession and it's so fun in our Instagram famous world too you know like my job is to teach this and I can pick apart every one of these cases with line angles or contouring or staining glazings but that's just to make ourselves better. What's really important is this reaction right here, is this patient smile, because we truly can change lives. And I just, I think it's so fun and so amazing. So what does it have to do with this beautiful setup? This is what makes my workflow more efficient every single day when I do these cases and actually just my workflows in general. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, this is my setup in my office. I have the Sprint Ray Pro 95 and the Pro Wash and Dry and the Cure Box. And um, the more I'm implementing it and the more I'm learning both here and when I teach down in Tempe, uh, the streamlining the processes, it's great. It's good communication for both me and the patients, um, easy and fun with the team and the technology we have today is just so cool. So thank you again for being here and let's, let's dive into it. So why, why are we gonna talk about this and why use a trial smile? So I have a practice in my town. Um, 
I have a practice where median family is about $50,000. I have patients come in all the time and ask and about a new smile and want a new smile, but I don't have that glamorous Hollywood office by any means where patients can afford, you know, $50,000 a case. And so I need something that is a good communication tool that's going to be efficient and affordable um, and easy to use. And so what I love about trial smiles is for a case similar to this. So this is a gentleman who came in my door and I was, his, I think, third or fourth consult. He had gone to a couple other dentists. Um, he had just lost his wife of 50 plus years of being married. He was her caretaker for a very long time. She had suffered through dementia and they had four beautiful kids in town and his uh, granddaughter was getting married and he had been a caretaker for so long. He just kind of forgot to care for himself. And he was really, really self-conscious to go to this wedding. Um, and he wanted to have a good impression and he wanted to make his granddaughter proud. Um, his granddaughter was a patient here in my practice. And so she recommended us, um, uh, because when he had gone to dentists previously, he kind of felt ashamed and they just wanted to pull all of his teeth and he wasn't ready for that psychologically. So we had him go to the periodontist. Um, we evaluated all his teeth and I tell you what, his teeth were rock solid, but I don't blame the other dentists because this, this is kind of a case that you cringe at, right? You have that hundred percent overjet, these huge diastemas and there's decay and it's kind of a mess. And what would you want to do ideally? I, of course, ideally would, you know, want to do ortho or want to do surgery. I mean, there's a million things we could do, but that wasn't realistic for his budget. It wasn't realistic for timing. Um, and he just really wanted to improve his smile. So can we do that? Can we just improve his smile? Well, before I was introduced to Sprint Ray, I would 100% do this with Sarek. And I did do this with Sarek because I didn't have the trial smile capability at that time in this fashion. But the catch is this takes me a long time to do a design. So I do deliver in same day. Um, it's something, it's one of the ways I built my practice and it's something that I just really enjoy doing and my patients enjoy um, getting those final restorations in one visit. But when I have a case like this, it takes a while to get that design under control and figure out how to create the illusion of a natural smile. So if you can do the trial smile ahead of time, it will give you a good roadmap and kind of show the patient where we're going to go and what improvements we could do. But on my side too, it also would save me a tremendous amount of time in my design. And this is what we were able to accomplish. So um, I'm not winning any AACD awards with it, but did we improve the smile? Absolutely. And I got the cutest note from his granddaughter with a picture of him smiling at the wedding, which was worth every torturous time of me designing this case because he was so proud of his granddaughter and so proud of his smile to smile at the wedding. You could just see the light in his eyes. And that's, again, that's why I love what we do. But could my workflow have been improved? Absolutely. Through digital wax ups, through trial smiles, just to say, hey, this is our roadmap of where we're going. What do I need for less dramatic changes? Do I always need a wax up or a trial smile? Well, this is a woman who would come in and she was heading off to her 40th year reunion and she wanted a brighter smile. She didn't like her worn looking teeth. She didn't like that the laterals didn't match um, and she wanted to change. And she had gone through ortho to set up her teeth, which were great. And can we improve it? Now, this is like my dream case, right? Like the teeth are already set up pretty easy just to prep these and give her some veneers and crowns with that bright smile. And that's what we did. And we were able to do this in one day. And with this retracted view, it looks pretty even and pretty great. Um, didn't necessarily need a wax up in this case because the teeth were already set up for me. But what I totally wish I would have had is this trial smile because 
despite my best efforts to communicate with her ahead of time, she had an asymmetrical smile in her lips and she loved her right side with the bigger teeth showing, but she wanted me to lengthen her teeth on nine, 10 and 11, which I couldn't do because of her bite. And I offered to do Botox to drop the lip on the other side, but she likes showing more teeth. And unfortunately there is only so much I can do. Did I deliver the brighter smile? Yes, but she walked away so disappointed because in her mind, her smile wasn't even because she wasn't showing as much teeth on her left side, even though she 100% realizes that that is muscles and not anything to do with dentistry. Uh, but I, if I would have had that trial smile option, or if I would have done it in this case, I could have prevented that. I could have mocked it up ahead of time to show her, hey, this is what it's going to look like. And we could have really gone over those discussions more and more and more. So um, she is now coming around to it and <laughs> happier with it. But I really could have prevented a lot of communication problems if I would have done this ahead of time. So we did look at her smiles and um, we discussed the fact that she does have a lower lip line on the left, but it just looks so much more dramatic with those brighter teeth. <laughs> so again, can you use it in a less dramatic change? Yes. Like matter of fact, now it's just part of my workflow because I just think the communication aspect is so important and it just gives the patients a goal to aim to. So how do we do it the analog way? So I did not do it for every case prior, um, but I did use it every once in a while. One of the main reasons I didn't before was just the, the fact that the costs for wax ups were just getting so expensive. Um, and again, I have a practice where that can really make or break a case when wax ups are $80 to $100 a tooth. And I'm a PPO practice where I get reimbursed $776 for a crown. That's a big chunk of the profit. And, um, and the patients can't always afford it, unfortunately. And so could we mock it up? Yes, but it definitely wasn't part of my workflow because I was inhibited by that cost factor. So, but in some cases like this case, this is a woman who came in and she's a dear friend and uh, colleague. She's in the dental industry and she wanted a big, brighter, more full smile. She didn't like the wear on the incisal edges. She didn't like her, how flat her teeth looked. And so she wanted to know how I could improve it. But my problem is when I look at a case like this, I get a little nervous because her teeth are set up really well. And I don't like grinding on teeth if I can avoid it, if they don't have any other problems. Um, this was 100% cosmetic. And I had tried to talk her into bonding, but she had had bonding before and there was some staining and she didn't like the maintenance of it. She really, really wanted porcelain. And so I wanted to grant her those wishes, but I also really wanted to make sure that I got the same vision that she did. And so I did get a digital wax up for this case. And you can see even looking at the wax up on the left versus her original teeth, it isn't really dramatic. And so are you willing to go through this and grind down on the teeth if it's not super dramatic? And again, this is all about communication. And here I just took a putty mix and I would put that on the wax up and then we would cut out little notches to make cleanup a little bit easier. We would inject temporary material in there and then put it on the teeth and clean up the excess as best as we could. So did this process take a long time? No, it was pretty efficient, but it was definitely a little messy. And here's what we got. So could I take the time and polish this down? I could, but I just wanna make sure that with her lip that she feels that support. Um, are the incisal edges in the right spot, my midline? I just really want it as a verification. Plus to be honest, I don't want it to be too good in my temps because I wanna be able to wow the patient with my finals as well. So it is. it was a good mock-up, but I think there could be improvement in it. So, I will tell you, I love, love, love taking videos of my patients. And um, I 
got permission to share all of these. I liked taking them. I just take them with my iPhone at a 45 degree angle because I want to actually see lip movement. I want to hear their speech. Um, so some of it is very selfish. And then the other part is these are fantastic for marketing. So the more I've been putting these on my social media, I get patients who come in all the time through that and say, will you make a video and put that up of me, uh, which is pretty cute. So from a marketing standpoint, it works really well too. But let's see what we got with this. Oh my gosh, I'm super excited. Thank you. I can't stop looking at myself. <laughs> what are the changes that we made? Um, eight teeth. So mm -hmm. premolar to premolar. Um, the teeth aren't as flat as they used to be. Um, they're more bulbous facially. Um, fuller. Made my lip a little fuller. I have a my smile when I'm resting. My face looks nicer. <laughs> <laughs> I like the terminology nice and safe there. Yeah. Yeah, they look great. Ooh, super excited. Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. Ah, okay, let's get done. <laughs> so she's super excited. She can't stop looking at them. They aren't as flat as they used to be. So one of her chief complaints is she didn't like her resting, we're going to say brat face. Um, she really wanted fuller lips to give a little bit more support. Um, and so, and teeth can obviously do that. And so that's another reason why she just wanted a little bit thicker teeth for that lip support. So this is the reaction of just plastic. So imagine what we can do. So I felt pretty confident after seeing this reaction and doing this trial smile this way that, okay, now we're, we're gonna do it. So you go through, prep the teeth. In this case, you can also use that trial smile as um, a verification of depth. And because this was an add-on technique, I didn't actually have to prep the buckle surfaces at all. Um, this is a veneer case. When I'm doing veneers, I definitely like to open up my inner proximals just because it makes the veneers a lot easier and adds a little bit of retentive surfaces too. So got the teeth prepped. And then we were pouring up models and I have the best team on the planet. I love my team, but uh, they definitely, when they're pouring up stone, you know, they'll add a little water, mix it, add a little powder. And I wish I could tell you that all of our models were perfect and didn't have air bubbles, but that's not the case. And even in this, you can see like on the lingual of 10, we had to have a little composite there to fix the model. Um, all of this is so much easier now, which I can't wait to show you, but we definitely, you know, it's nice to have that working model so you can really work on the contours and then we stain and glaze. And here is where we started and here's where we finished. And so we gave her that natural, definitely bigger, bolder teeth, uh, which it fits her so well. And so again, I like taking those trial smiles because I wanna see the reaction. I wanna know what they like and don't like and what they wanna fix, but these are definitely my favorite videos. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Do we have new veneers? You ready to take a look at it? Yeah, take a look, take a look. <laughs> My dog comes to work every day with me. <laughs> He's a therapy oh, dog. Oh, oh, I love them. Oh. Oh, I really God. like them too. Color you wanted? Oh, go on, you start crying. <laughs> <laughs> So what I saw is very small changes. They were very emotional and big changes to her. Um, and typically when we do these, we celebrate them with our whole team and there's lots of people involved. And um, this is, it's an emotional response. It's what you wanna support. So. So how can we improve on that? We have a digital office. We are always pushing the envelope to go forward. And that's what we're really here to see tonight. So let's talk about the digital way. So all my patients are just so near and dear. This is a woman who um, has been through a tremendous amount of life and she hasn't always had a lot to smile about and she doesn't smile very often because she's had this tetracycline staining for so long. Um, and this just, these are the cases that kind of break my heart because I, I want people to smile and I, I want to fix these. 
So this is what it looks like up close. I thought originally that she actually just had some bonding on there um, that turned dark, but she had these kind of funny notches. And this is really, really deep tetracycline staining. But this is a case, um, she was a very nervous phobic patient and um, I needed to make sure that she really wanted to go through with this and try this. So I will tell you that Sprint Ray Cloud Design Services um, has absolutely changed my flow of practice. And one of the main reasons is with their digital wax ups, I told you before, I would do them in some cases, but I couldn't do them in all cases because it could have been a make or break with my patients. And um, wax ups, instead of being 60 to $100 per tooth, they've made it $20 a tooth. And so it's made these digital designs so much more affordable that the efficiency time that I save is well worth the cost. So can you charge your patient? Absolutely. And a lot of offices do. I don't choose to because it's cut my time down chair side so much that I've just more than made up for that. Um, and I also use Sprint Ray Cloud Design for my surgical guides and for my occlusal guards. And again, in my workflows, I can do an occlusal guard now for $20, $20 for the design. I print it for $4 for the resin. And I will 100% give my patients, especially my smile design patients, a uh, free occlusal guard if they didn't want one or didn't treatment plan um, purely to protect my the porcelain work that I did uh, because it's so much more affordable. Um, and printing is just fun. So I, I learned about uh, Sprint Ray Cloud Design mostly because of surgical. And then as I found out more on the digital side and the smile design side, now it is literally a part of my workflow in every respect. And so not hard to do. I take a digital scan. So I'm a big Sarah doctor. So I use my prime scan, but you can use any digital scanner that converts to an STL file. So if my prime scans are milling, then we also have a three disc Karen that's really easy to scan. Um, and so my assistants will grab that if we're not milling same day just to get this workflow going. So we need an STL file, and then I just need a smile photo. And that's what's gonna help the designers for their smile designs. And then we just go to Sprint Ray dashboard and it's so easy. You just start new treatment, you add in your patient name and all the information and that walks you through. And then you can select, are you doing an occlusal guard? Are you doing a smell design, bracket removal, surgical guides? They have all the things, clear aligners, really easy. So you just select what you're gonna do. So in our case, we're doing smile design. You can pick what kind of teeth you're looking for. Do you want more youthful, more mature, the Hollywood smile? Um, you can write little notes to your designer. I typically get these back within at least 48 hours, but normally it's actually a little bit faster, which is awesome. And then you get a little pop-up to view it. And then any changes that I want made, I just write back and say, hey, maybe let's move the incisal edge position on the laterals a little higher, a little lower, whatever we're looking for. So this is what it would look like when you get it back. So um, I can view the wax up ahead of time. You can spin the model around. And then the best part is I literally, it doesn't matter if I'm at work or at home on my laptop, I can cue my printer and then just hit Q to printer and it will go in. If I wanna print directly, you can see kind of down below in the shadow where it says print, it will just go straight to my printer, which is easy. It makes it so nice. There are two printers available right now, just um, so you guys know, there's the Pro 95 and the Pro 55. I have the Pro 95 in my office. I will tell you it is a workhorse, uh, just like my Sarek and my Mills, it is going pretty much all day, whether we're doing uh, models for occlusal guards or bleach trays or whatever. We just, uh, surgical guides, we tend to be printing all the time, which is so fun because you just click print and leave it. Um, so we have the 95, it has a big platform and it's pretty fast. Uh, but now the Pro 55, I don't have in my personal office yet. I can't wait to get it, but um, I do have it at the teaching center and it is a smaller platform, but it prints in a lot more fine detail. So if you're going to do a lot of smile designs and do your temps, it's fantastic. Um, or if you want a lot of details in your models, then it's a good way to go. And this was from the Pro 55. And you can really see, you can get a lot of anatomy. Um, I didn't want a lot of anatomy personally in this case. And so this is exactly what I was looking for. And just nice sharp line angles. And, um, 
and then the trial smiles. So this has been so fun. Uh, Sprint Ray has a new resin called NX, Onyx, excuse me. And uh, this is what I've got to play with. And so this is definitely a sneak peek. We're not quite launched yet, but we're very, very close. Um, so I'm gonna go through the workflow because there's a couple things through trial and error that we've seen. This is what it looks like on the right side with the platform. So it's um, the resin kind of bubbles up a little bit. It prints this trial smile. You get the trial smile from the Sprint Ray designers. And then instead of putting it in the pro wash, the resin is just a little bit more technical technique sensitive, I would say, maybe um, a little bit more, I don't, it's not really fragile, but um, instead of dunking it in the alcohol, we just want to spray it. And so that was definitely a lesson learned. I'll show you what happens if you do dunk it in the alcohol or go through the pro wash dry. But this for handling purposes, you take it off the platform, you just take a paper towel and you remove any of the excess resin. And then I'm just lightly spritzing with a spray bottle of alcohol to remove all of the excess resin. And this is also removing the oxygen inhibitive layer. And then once it's cleaned up, this is what it's going to look like. And then you're going to put it in the oven. So again, we are working on the profiles. It's not in the cure box yet. Um, love the pro cure because you have a definite time and a definite temp <laughs> for all of the materials, um, especially once this is in. You can also use custom profiles if you get really geeky or if you're testing new materials. Um, I'll tell you when I started printing way back when we would get the little um, round solar table and the nail lights and it was definitely not nearly as scientific. So it's really nice to have the Procure now where you literally just put it in and you know it's actually cured to whatever resin you're using. So cure the resin and then you remove the supports you do have to be a little gentle removing those supports. And then after I remove the supports, I just lightly polish those areas where the supports were. And then I like to take either just some sort of composite glaze. So whether that's the Vita Enamic glaze, and then I just light cure that. Or you can use the Opti Glaze from GC America. If you want to get really geeky, you can definitely add in colors and highlights. You can also do this with your temporaries. Um, I did try this on a couple of my trial smiles just because I was so excited to play with it, but the patients, it doesn't have quite the reflective properties that porcelain does. And so the patient was like, what's this blue line? And so I just ended up polishing it off, but to get that nice shiny glaze is really pretty and it feels smooth for the patients. And so the patients do like that part. And again, this is all done in just minutes. It's so fast. So just put on my glaze and I light cure it. And then we're ready to go. So putting this in on the patient, it just snaps in so easy. It took a whopping maybe two seconds. Um, can you see the gingival margins a little bit? Yes, I have the cheeks retracted. Um, my point isn't to give a definitive smile. My point again is for communication and to give the patient a goal of where we're going to go at the end of the day. Cause these in, in my world are kind of long days cause we're delivering in one appointment, but even if you weren't going to deliver in one appointment, it's still just a great communication tool to say, Hey, this is what your smile could look like. And this is my favorite part right here. So we are doing our trial smiles. We have not prepped the teeth yet, but we want you to take a peek at it and see what you think. This is our goal for the day. So go ahead and open your eyes and give me a big smile. Go and look in the mirror. Oh my God. <laughs> so this is our goal by the end of the day. This is what we're going to reach for. Oh my God. Oh my God. What do you think? They're amazing. <laughs> and how easy was that? How did we do that when we just, we just snapped them right in? I don't, I don't know how you, I can't believe it. So these are just the plastic ones. That's the cool part. And then we're going to do the actual porcelain ones that which you're going to have today. You just want to make sure this is what we're looking for. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You ready to get started? Yeah. Let's do it. So what you can't see in this is she literally had tears streaming down her face, um, as did my assistant, because she has hated her smile for so long. Um, and so the, the fact that we were going to do something about it was just, oh, just so heartwarming. Um, and some, what I'm excited for is, um, I know before people are doing like trial smile parties where you could have these trial smiles ready to go. You'd, you would bring your patients in and scan them, and then you can have 
um, you know, whether they're friends or just other patients, just like you just literally pop them in. They're so easy to snap in. And then you can have them walk around and show people like, Hey, this is what my smile could look like. Um, just the opportunities for marketing and for case acceptance are just endless because now it's so easy to do and affordable to do, which I just, I love, but it's these, these reactions, like this is what I'm looking for. And that smile is just so genuine. And this is just plastic. I mean, I showed you guys what it looked like before. It wasn't anything, you know, in our Insta famous world, it wasn't these perfect, perfect teeth, but to her, they were perfect teeth. So prepped the case. Um, tetracycline can be a little bit rough, especially for doing porcelain because of all the staining. So um, I ended up doing full coverage on these instead of veneers. One, I found in these cases that um, bonding isn't the best uh, with the veneers. And really because our tetracycline staining was so, so dark, I wanted porcelain all the way around. And especially when she laughs, she tips her head back a lot. And I didn't want to see this bright white and then uh, really dark on the linguals. And so she wanted to do the crowns and that's where we went with that. But then what do you do if you have these really dark grooves? And so I like to use more translucent porcelains, but in order to do that, I need some sort of block out. And what I do is I use opaquers. And so to get the tooth ready after I prep, and, and sometimes you have to prep even just these lines a little bit more to make room for the material, but then I just use a self-adhesive bond. So I'm just scrubbing my bond in. I air dry that bond so there's no movement. I cure that. And then I love Cosmetin's Pink Opaquer. It's probably one of my favorite, favorite materials on the market because it does such a nice job blocking out grays and blacks and these really deep tetracycline stains. And so I just go through and I move that around. It's just essentially a flowable composite that's just gonna make those preps a little bit more even. And so then I can use a more translucent material at the end. So then I'm a steric doctor. So then I scan my patient and I do all the margins. I love, and this has just changed my world. The minute I'm done prepping and I scan my patient, I send that to the printer to start printing my working model. And it's made such a difference on my contouring before in my purple phase, my blue phase, um, before I baked the crowns, I would go and I would try them in and make sure my contacts were good and check my line angles. And now I just completely eliminated that step by printing the models. And my assistant doesn't have to do the powder water ratio with the quick stone. Um, they fit a lot better on this model. I just, it has changed my workflow so much. And then I get my design. And because I have this digital wax up, like this is my initial design. And it just, it doesn't take a lot of effort at all to make some very minor tweaks. I mill my crowns. I then add my anatomy and do my staining and glazing again, making sure these are all on my working model. And what's great is now, like even when I'm delivering this case to the patient, they, they even get the wow effect because they can see the printer working. They hear the mills working and they think, oh, cool. I'm in this like high tech office. How fun is this? And then the best part right here, again, love these videos, take videos in your office. Before we get going, what did we do today? Talking to yeah, yeah. Before you look in the mirror, you can look at me and talk to me. Just don't look in the mirror yet. What did we do today? We gave me a whole brand new smile. Yeah. Have you seen it yet? No. No. Do you want to see it now? Yeah. Are you nervous? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at it. Let's see. Oh my god. <laughs>
like how cool that we get to do this in dentistry. Like this is what makes my job worth it. All of the DOs and all the things that I don't love about dentistry. This is what I absolutely love about dentistry. So why are there advantages with the printing workflow? It's also assistant time because the assistant literally were just exporting a file and pushing print. So now my assistant's off in other operatories doing other things while we're getting our mills ready and our crowns ready. Um, if you just literally click print. Uh, more consistency in the models if there's if that powder water ratio isn't perfect, <laughs> it's more efficient. I just can't tell you enough. I'm a huge spreadsheet lover. And so we've changed our workflows and actually brought our time down quite dramatically with this um, easier cleanup. And I didn't really talk about that too much, but what's so nice about being able to snap on that trial smile versus having to grind through say a temp material is it doesn't gunk up your diamonds, um, clean up on the gums. Like literally it's just this one piece that you snap in. So then we snap it off and start prepping. Can you use it as a guide? Absolutely. You can definitely use it as a depth guide when you're prepping by just snapping it on. So now I don't have to do, if you do like the Essex or the putty, a depth guide, you can use that instead. And then just the patient wow factor is huge. Like you got to see her reaction to just this printed resin model. And then one thing that I would just tell you is we celebrate this with our entire team. And it's the best advice I can give you. And what does that mean? So it means in our morning huddle, we know that these patients are coming in. We know they're going to be here a full day. And so my front office team is asking them, we just order like a smoothie from Panera while they're just sitting around because it's a long day and they're going to get hungry. Um, and they're going to ask like, let me see your smile when they walk through the door so that we can see what it's going to look like at the end. And my hygiene, we have a pretty busy hygiene. We have four or five hygiene at all times. I have three doctors. We run pretty hard in our office. We have so much fun, but I can't always make the hygiene checks. And so if I'm running late or if a patient wanted to see me and I can't see them, my hygienists are always delivering that story of Dr. Odland is changing someone's life or they'll get up and see if I'm busy and they'll come back and say, I'm so sorry. I just walked in and the room's full of tears. And it's, it's always celebrating what's happening in our office. Um, and it's, it, that's, what's really brought attention to doing more and more of these cases is because patients hear that and think, oh, well, I want to change my smile too. Maybe they didn't think it was an option. And then they start that conversation with the hygienist. And then take videos, even if you're not going to put them on social media, just to take them for you and your team as a reminder. Like sometimes it is nice in that morning huddle to just show like, why do we do what we do? Um, and just know you're making an impact on patients' lives. But I will say, if you want to do it for marketing, make sure you get permission from the patient. Um, but I've just been shocked about how many patients now come in and say, I saw your video. I want to be in a video too. Please help my smile. And they're posting it on their social media and asking if we'll post their case on ours as well. So it makes it really fun. Great, great marketing in especially around your media area. So I definitely want to touch on a few mistakes that I've made. Um, this is why I get asked to work with companies is because I make lots of mistakes all the time and I'm willing to share them so that you don't have to make them too. Uh, so what happens if you have a misprint? Um, couple different ways you can have a misprint. So if you get into printing, one of the really important things is to stir your resin. Um, so I told you it's so easy to print. You literally just click a button and sometimes it's so easy to print that we click a button and we forget to remove the lid on the resin. <laughs> and so that's obviously a reason that we have a misprint, but what can happen sometimes is if the printer thinks it's printing, it's going to start its light curing at the bottom. And all of a sudden we were having these misprints and we couldn't figure out why. And we would stir very superficially, but it wasn't until I really like felt at the bottom that um, it had cured a little bit of resin on the bottom. So then it, the light couldn't get through and it couldn't hook up to the mounting plate. So um, make sure you really do stir the resin, make sure nothing sticks to the bottom of it. That was uh, something that we had happen and not just once, but a couple of times. <laughs> And then making sure like we're constantly printing models and then we'll switch to surgical guides or occlusal guards and make sure that you actually go to your settings and change your resin in there um, because the printing process is different. And every once in a while, like I, 
unfortunately our resin would say surgical guide, but we were printing models and then we would have misprints there as well. And you can fit a lot of models on the platforms. Uh, my first trial smile attempts, I did a couple things wrong. I think I mentioned earlier that I had put it in the pro wash. And so you can do awesome crowns, um, temporary crowns, bridges, that kind of thing. And those ones you put in the basket. And so I was just following that protocol. Totally shame on me. I did not follow directions as I was told. Um, so I put it in there and it caused a little too much alcohol. So one, you get this uh, kind of frosty white sheen, but then it also made them a little bit more fragile. And so um, as I was snapping them in, some of them were breaking and that was 100% because I was curing wrong. So uh, when I do a case, any startup of a case, this is a gentleman where we were doing his uppers and lowers because he had some pretty severe wear. Um, I print the existing models. And so I know where we started and I have that in a digital file as well, but there's just something about holding it and being able to even just show the patient that and talk to the patient. Um, I like printing the existing models. And then I printed the, I always print the wax ups of where we're going because I can also incorporate that into the steric and copy that directly through biocopy. And again, it's just something that the patients want to hold sometimes uh, if they don't want to just look at a picture. And then I print my trial smiles. And so this one you can see <laughs> was a little bit uh, more severe in his anatomy. Um, we'll show you this case here in a second. So this is where we started. This is another gentleman. These are just very real cases in my practice. So, I mean, I look at this and do I want to do interdisciplinary ideal dentistry. Absolutely. Like he probably needs surgery, osseous surgery, um, to raise up his anterior maxilla. Um, you can see very canted smile, but again, it's just, it's not realistic for him or a situation. And he just asked, can I have improvement? His teeth were getting a little sensitive because of the wear. Um, but he, and it has actually, his wife had come in and said, can you just fix my husband's smile? And I said, well, let's see what we can do. And here's what we're looking at occlusally. And so you can see like, would ortho be great? Yeah, ortho would be fantastic, but he wasn't quite willing to do that. Um, and so we were, we did what we could work with. And here is the trial smile. <laughs> so um, I learned a lot from this trial smile. One, he didn't want that B1 bleach Hollywood shade. And so I used an A3 in which he said, great, I love this shade. Let's just go one notch higher. Okay, well, that's easy to do. So I like having the different shades in the temp smile. I think it's super helpful. And then this was a really obvious way to see that he had such a canted smile. Um, and the wax up mimicked that where just looking at the wax up, it looked pretty ideal, but his maxilla is actually canted. And so this gave me the opportunity to talk to him. And for me in my design, when I went back to my CEREC to know for nine, 10 and 11, I needed to bring that up a little bit so I could give the illusion of it being straighter and flat. Cause that's all we're doing. We're just giving the illusion of a nice, even smile. And then when I showed him this, he said, oh, what is that black tooth back there? And he had a big amalgam in there. And I said, well, you know, this is what we kind of talked about before is that tooth is going to look a little bit darker because he, he wasn't really prepared at that time to do it. And he said, no, never mind. Like, I would like to do that tooth as well, because it looks like a either have a hole or I have a dead tooth. So can we fix that? So it was great because it was good communication. And we were able to just add that at our same day. And then here's our result that we ended up with. Um, so we ended up doing the uppers and lowers and um, I think he was really, really happy with the result. And he was so excited also to just see that trial ahead of time because uh, he wasn't quite sure what was gonna happen. And he didn't want, he was so conscious about, I don't want a perfect Hollywood smile. I want it to look natural. I don't want my friends to know. So, so it's fun. And then of course, what else can I print? Am I just printing it for my trial smiles? No, I told you earlier, my printer is a workhorse. And so we're constantly printing models, uh, whether it's for bleach trays or um, our digital wax ups and then surgical guides. That's how I got introduced to the Sprint Ray printer and saw how easy it was to print. I had a different printer before, but having to use that third party, um, I just, I'm a little nerdy, but I wasn't quite that nerdy. And my team definitely did not want any part of my last printer, but now they find this one just so easy to quick print that it's great. So um, I love guided surgery. So the surgical guides are fantastic. Again, occlusal guards, we like the 
beautiful lavender purple color, um, but they're just, they're easy to make. We polish them up and we can deliver them really, really quickly, especially in today's world where everyone is clenching and grinding their teeth and breaking their teeth. So do I just use this for trial smiles and digital wax ups? Absolutely not. You can use it for so many things. And now how do you learn more? Sprint Ray has a ton of resources on their Sprint Ray website. So um, you just go to learning and they have their webinars and they have their master classes with videos. And um, they do a really, really nice job going through all the videos step by step on anything that you want to learn, whether it's crown and bridge or dentures or occlusal guards. There are so many options today. And what I love about Sprint Ray in particular is it is dental only, and they're constantly pushing the limits as to what we can do with that. And then, of course, I am very biased. This is totally a shameless plug. I love live patient education. Um, so I do teach on Trial Smile. We do use Seric to deliver same day, and we use our same day smile. Um, we do use the Trial Smile in our workflow, which I just love. And so it gives both the doctor and the patients ahead of time a roadmap of where they're going to go. Um, and then to see these faces afterwards of the patients being so excited. And there's always a mentor looking over your shoulder. And when you can see that you created that with your own hands, your team members just get excited and on board. And then, and it just, it feels good to know that you made it. So if you're interested at all, check us out at implantpathway.com um, for any classes, or of course you can email me or find me on Instagram. Um, anything I can do, I am pretty transparent and just I'm so passionate about all my technology. And so if I can help in any way, please let me know. And thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. I think I lost Corinne, but let's see. Let's see if I can look at some of these chats. Um, for the resolution, I am printing on the 100. And yes, that was the Vita Anamic Glaze, but you can use any composite resin glaze. And so Cosmetit makes one, Vita obviously makes one, the Vita Anamic Glaze. Um, and then we also have the GC Opti Glaze, which is a fantastic kit. Sometimes it's just literally what's in the op and what's easy to grab. Uh, how thin can they be? I will be honest, they are designed by the designer. So, um, I don't know how thin they can actually be. I haven't designed them myself, although I'm sure you can design them in ExoCAD, but they're, they're pretty thin. I'm guessing it's gonna be around that 0.3 is what I would guess. Um, but I can definitely find out if you wanna shoot me an email. And if you want to have a smoother surface, oh, someone is answering. Thank you for whoever's answering. How do you merge the smile design with the preps for care stream? I am so sorry. I am definitely a Seric user, so I'm not super familiar with the care stream software. In Seric, um, we have extra catalogs that we can add image catalogs. And so you can overlay them and ghost them. I would assume that care stream has something similar, or if you did that trial smile, you should be able to image directly. And then you could add that catalog in directly if you can't do an extra oral scan. But um, I am so sorry. I'm not a care stream user. And, oh, thank you, Steve Gray, for answering. <laughs> um, there was a question, if I biocopy the snap on smile. So I have tried that. There, it isn't a perfect marriage in the fact of biocopying. And so I actually prefer to just scan the digital wax up. And then when I'm in my Seric software for any Seric users, um, I actually still call it bio generic individual and have the computer design it, it does look at the biocopy catalog and then I ghost it over and do any of my movements that way. That is purely just laziness out of the fact that I don't like necessarily doing all the lines that go around because um, it takes a little bit more time. So doing the biocopy lines to copy each tooth. And so, and I'm just faster at moving that around in the design service, but you can do a biocopy. I have found, and I've tried the different ways that I think it's easier to biocopy off of the digital wax up instead of the trial smile directly. 
trial smells at this point are definitely an added technique because I haven't prepped the teeth at all. And when you're doing that added technique, there is still a little bit of a gap. And so it can just still be a little too thick when it's snapped in. Thanks, Dr. Audlin. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Oh, okay. I don't know what happened. I had to leave Zoom. Um, but I did lose the Q&As. So if you do see anything, if you could answer that. I do see in the chat something from Steve that says, does digital wax stitch decently? Um, does that make sense to let the biogenetic go? And how do all how do you do all six or eight at a time? Yeah, so I think they stitch really well as long as you're getting very good clean scans of more posterior teeth. So if I'm doing six or eight, I'm at least going to the first molars or even the second molars so that I have the material to stitch for. And you do that sometimes in the catalog, you'll get the little caution sign. And so it won't stitch automatically, but you can manually correlate them. And you just have to pick three points that you can pretty, you can see very clearly, whether it's on the posterior teeth or a lot of times even you can see like the rugae on the palate and you can stitch those together. Um, and then you check the correlation on your stitch. And so I haven't had a problem stitching them. Where I have had a problem is if I'm doing full mouth upper restorations. And so then sometimes I'll either, uh, I like to make a little jig to let them stitch. And so I'll do like a, a putty jig where um, it will, it's almost like wearing a holly retainer where they won't sit on the teeth, but it will be on the roof of the mouth. And you can make some like fun designs and you put that on the model and you would scan it and then you put it on the mouth as well. And then you can stitch them together. So there's definitely workarounds for that. And, but I found that they do stitch well. Um, I don't always do full arches at one time. I tend to split those up in my practice just because of my workflow. So I'll do my six or eight anterior first, and then I'll split my posterior, posteriors, excuse me, after that. And so that also makes stitching a lot easier. So hopefully that made sense. Great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So I'm not seeing anything else um, on my end. Awesome. So yeah, if I didn't answer anything, please email me or shoot me an Instagram message and I will happily answer if I can. Or I know the Sprint Ray team's probably on here too, and they're super knowledgeable, obviously, about all the Sprint Ray stuff. So awesome. Well, thank you, Dr. Audlin, for the great presentation. And if anyone has any outstanding questions, you can email us too at webinars at henryshine.com. As a thank you for attending, everyone will receive the recording via email in the next week. So thank you all for joining us and we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Thank you, Dr. Audlin. Thank you, appreciate it.